Everything in the universe is geometric, whether it's people, trees, cats, planets, solar systems, stars, you name it. Anything in the universe can be measured on a geometric scale. Having said that, it's important to note that creation is also geometric. What we're going to be looking at today is the pattern of creation. Essentially what this means is that everything in the universe comes out of this single pattern. I'm not making this up. This single image will change everything. When I mentioned in Lesson 5 that the ancient Egyptians and even more ancient civilizations knew about a deeper, basic understanding of the universe, this is the flower of life, and it is also the creation pattern of everything in existence. Even non-tangible things, emotions, thoughts, music in its entire spectrum, everything comes from this image. Okay, so there are 13 information systems that comes out of the flower of life. Today, I'm going to show you how physical reality can manifest itself, which is just one of the 13 systems. In future lessons, we will look at more. It's also important to note that, at first, it may not make sense. I ask that you do not choose immediately to shut this out, and just watch with an open mind, and try and see this in a new way. Also, I want to tell you that by learning about sacred geometry simply by observing, you are absorbing only a very minuscule amount of information. If you really want to learn more, you must begin to draw it yourself. I kid you not, when you do this, you begin to see things in a new way. You begin to understand why things are done in the way that they are done. Promise. The flower of life was known around the world in ancient times. It was found in Ireland, Turkey, Israel, Egypt, China, Greece, Germany, India, and Iceland. It's also been recorded to have been found in England, Tibet, Japan, Sweden, Lapland, the Yucatan, and I think 14 other places. This thing is everywhere. Not only that, but everywhere around the world it has the same name, the flower of life. Now, to understand the flower of life, first we have to talk about how it's formed. This could get incredibly complex, so I'll try and keep it simple. Imagine consciousness, or spirit, floating in a void which means it's nothingness, and then spirit. No physical body or mind, just spirit, and that's it. Then blackness, essentially nothing, all around the spirit, for infinite. Spirit decides to do something, so it expands its consciousness all around itself as far as it can go without moving. It creates a sphere around itself. This is the first circle in the flower of life. Then, spirit has an awareness of what's around itself in 360 degrees. It moves to the very edge of the sphere anywhere and repeats what it did the first time. It creates this image, which also creates the Vesica Pisces, Within the Vesica Pisces is a vast and incredible amount of knowledge about width, proportion, depth. Also comes the square roots of 2, 3, and 5, which are all numbers that go on forever. But even more interestingly, comes geometric information about light. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, spirit has no choice but to do it again. Spirit is flawless, and therefore it will move flawlessly, creating the next circle either here or here, exactly one radius away from the other circle next to it. Every time spirit moves another sphere, more and more knowledge comes out of the image that is created. The first complete image to be formed is this. It has two names, the seed of life or the Genesis pattern, and for good reason. Now let's look at the book of Genesis for a second. Each of these movements or creations of circles can be seen as another day. On the first movement, the second sphere, it created knowledge about not only mathematical proportions, but light. The first sentence of Genesis says, the earth was without form and void, and that the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In the very next sentence, God says, let there be light, the key here is in the order. The movement happened first, then light happened immediately after. Well, but what about the waters? Well, you have to remember that the Bible has been changed over time a lot. The ancient Egyptians would say that the way our modern Bibles begin creation is impossible, especially if you think about it from a physics point of view. Imagine a dark, infinite space that goes on forever and ever in all directions. You're just floating there with nothing. You can't really fall, but where would you fall to? From a purely physics or mathematical point of view, motion itself, or kinetic energy, is absolutely impossible in a void. You can't even rotate, because motion cannot become real unless there is one other object in the space around you. So the ancient Egyptians would say that before God moved upon the face of the waters, it would first have to create something to move relative to. So, Genesis pattern. After three spheres, you get the Holy Trinity. Another interesting one, it says in many Bibles of the world, not just the Christian Bible, that on the fourth day of Genesis, exactly one half of creation was completed. Starting from the first motion, exactly one half of the circles were formed on the fourth day. Fifth day of Genesis, sixth circle, more information. And then on the sixth day, a geometric miracle takes place. The last circle forms a complete six petaled flower. This is what many earlier Bibles meant when they said, in the beginning, there were six. Our Bible even said creation was formed in six days, and this fits exactly. This is the pattern of Genesis, and so it's called the Genesis pattern. It's also the beginning of the creation of the universe that we live in. These original movements of spirit are really important, but now let's look at something even cooler. Another image that comes out of this pattern is this. It's called the Tree of Life. Many may recognize this as the Jewish or Hebrew Kabbalah, but the Kabbalah did not originate this image, and there is proof. 
The Tree of Life does not belong to any culture, not even the Egyptians who carved the Tree of Life on two sets of three pillars at Karnak Temple, Luxor, over 5,000 years ago. It's outside any race or religion, as with all of these images. There are patterns that are intimately connected with nature. You'll also notice that every circle on the Tree of Life is either the length or width of the Vesica Pisces. The second image beyond Genesis in the Flower of Life is the Egg of Life. This is formed during the second vortex motion. Upon its completion, it creates an image like this, a three-dimensional shape that you can hold in your hand. If you were to connect their centers, you would see a cube. So what, who cares? Well, the ancient Egyptians did because they were concerned with creation, life, and death. They called this cluster of spheres the egg of life. You probably won't believe me just yet, but this shape is the morphogenic structure that created your body. Your entire physical existence is dependent on the egg of life structure, and everything about you was created from that form. Everything from your eye color to how long your fingers are, this is a whole lesson on its own, so let's move on for now. All around the world, the flower of life was always made the exact same way. See, this pattern can clearly go on forever. However, they always, always stopped after 19 circles. Why? Well, because they didn't want you to see what I'm about to show you. Back then, this image and knowledge was so sacred that they couldn't allow it to become common knowledge. It was appropriate at that time. However, now we either use the information or fall further into darkness. In biology, all cells have a zona pellucida around the edge. These circles around the flower of life are the zona pellucida of the flower of life. You must remove these, then complete the spheres that were cut off by the zona pellucida. With one more step, you will have the secret. Finish the drawing, add the final missing circles, giving you this. This image is the fruit of life. This pattern of 13 circles is one of the holiest, most sacred forms in existence. It's called the fruit because it is the result, the fruit, from which the fabric of the details of the reality were created. Remember when we talked about male and female energy, lesson four? As you can see, this image is female. It has no straight lines. However, when you combine male lines with these female circles, something amazing happens. What you do is draw a straight line from the very center of every single circle to every other circle in this image. When you do this, you get an image which is known throughout the universe, everywhere, as Metatron's cube. It is one of the most important informational systems in the universe, one of the basic creation patterns in existence. So what is Metatron's cube? Well, anyone who has studied sacred geometry, or even regular geometry for that matter, knows that there are five unique shapes in the universe, and that they are crucial to understanding both regular and sacred geometry. They are called the platonic solids. A platonic solid has certain characteristics by definition. First of all, all of its faces are the same size. For example, a cube, the most well-known platonic solid, has a square on every face, so all of its faces are the same size. Secondly, the edges of the platonic solids are all the same length. All edges of the cube are the same length. Third, it only has one size of interior angles between the faces. In the case of the cube, this angle is 90 degrees. And fourth, when put inside of a sphere, all of the points will touch the edge of the sphere perfectly. With that definition, there are only four shapes besides the cube that fit that description. So what are they? Well, we have the dodecahedron, the tetrahedron, the octahedron, the isosahedron, and the hexahedron. All of these shapes are found within Metatron's cube. This knowledge is also where original alchemy came from. The ancient alchemists and great souls like Pythagoras, father of Greece, considered each shape to have an elemental aspect to them. The tetrahedron was considered fire, the cube was earth, the octahedron was air, the isosahedron was water, and the dodecahedron was ether. Ether, also known as prana, and tachyon energy are all the same thing. They extend anywhere and are accessible at any point in space, time, and dimension. This is the great secret of zero-point technology. The sphere is voidness. These six elements are the building blocks of the universe, and they create the qualities of the universe. To summarize, this is the first informational system that comes out of the fruit of life through Metatron's cube. In alchemy, they rarely discussed ether. I've read that in the Pythagorean school, if you even uttered the word dodecahedron outside of the school, they would kill you on the spot. That's how sacred this shape was. 200 years later, when Plato was alive, he would discuss it, but only very carefully. This is because the dodecahedron is near the outer edge in your energy field, and is the highest form of consciousness. There's quite a bit more here, but I don't think I can go much further on it right now. Anyways, recognize this? The periodic table of elements? Every single element on this table has a geometric relation to one of these five shapes. Modern scholars ridiculed this idea until the 1980s, when Professor Robert Moon at the University of Chicago demonstrated that the entire periodic table of elements Literally everything in the physical world is based on these same five forms. In fact, throughout modern physics, chemistry, and biology, the sacred geometric patterns of creation are being rediscovered. Another example is the egg of life that I showed you earlier. Hopefully that will help you to understand just how incredible and important of a discovery this truly is. Everything that modern science knows about the elements and reality are tied together through the platonic solids, which come out of Metatron's cube, which is formed out of the fruit of life, which comes from the flower of life, which is made by spirit. Damn. Whether you're convinced yet or not, this is the missing piece of the puzzle. It all comes down to spirit.
Don't forget, this is just one of 13 informational systems that created the universe. If you want to study this on depth in your own, the best resource I'm aware of is the book The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. All right, I'm gonna wrap up with something I think you'll enjoy. Do you believe in aliens? Even after lesson five, I realize many of you might be skeptical. Would you believe me if I flat out told you that aliens have been coming to Earth and helping us for a very long time now? No? How about now? This is the flower of life in a crop circle. Remember, the flower of life is not only tied to everything in the universe, but consciousness, spirit, as well. Here's another one, and another one. Here's the Vesica Pisces in a crop circle. See, by creating these crop circles, aliens have been actually affecting and helping the consciousness of the planet. Do not fear aliens, they're here to help. <laughs>